Hello and welcome back to Princess Evangile. Well, you two are just about the right size. That's what I was thinking. You've got a good balance. Well, what are you talking about, Messiah san Idiot. I get. Uh, um, I seem to be saying that a lot today. But I would have been in trouble if they'd gotten any bigger. In trouble? Well, even now I have to. You know, tie them down tight, or they, they swing everywhere and it hurts. Uh, during club, I mean. Ah, you're in the track club, aren't you? I knew it. She definitely wasn't like that before. In that respect, I have it easy. Gnomi-chan puffed up her chest, and it really was quite small. Yes, because that sh- I'm back to my previous statement, she looks like she's about 13. And I'll be honest, I am not comfortable discussing the bra size of a 13-year-old. It makes me feel really bloody creepy. And that's nice in its own way. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> Multiple smacks to the head and I'm now in the right state of mind. I just wrap them in cotton and they never get in my way during a match. Ah, you still have growing to do, Konomi. You might surprise Ritsuko soon enough. Huh? You might even end up all curves. I, 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 I don't... I, I don't think I like that idea. It was honestly kind of hard to imagine. This is the first time I've seen the pool without any water in it. It's quite interesting. It looks big when you see it like this. Yeah, like a place you just moved to. It looks bigger because there's new furniture in it. Wow, I, I, I dropped quite northern for a second there. Just by using the phrase there's knee furniture in it rather than no furniture in it. <clears throat> now that you mention it, it is like that. Though, generally, I don't even get furniture after I've moved into a place. <laughs> Was it really that bad? The grime... <clears throat> the grime is certainly stubborn, but that just gets me more fired up. I'm so jealous. My arms got tired so quickly. It seems to me that you've barely done anything, sister. <laughs> I did the best I could. I'm just not used to picking up anything heavier than chopsticks. But we live the same lifestyle, sister. Ah, maybe we're just born different. For heaven's sake, you can see we made the right decision by joining you. Fine, then my break is over. It really must have been very hard on the swimming club. Yes, the chief who benefits must shoulder the burden. The swim club does use the pool the most, after all. Speaking of which, where is the swimming club? I thought that we'd come here to help them. Yeah, well, when I came in here earlier, they all sort of ran away. They ran away? But why? I don't know. I guess they were just too embarrassed to be seen in their swimsuits. They actually threw the deck brushes at me kind of hurt. Oh dear. I did show up without warning, can't really blame them for being surprised. Still, it's such an overreaction. But there's nothing we can do about it. Messiah Sam's reputation may have increased, but they've still never spoken to him directly. Yeah, that's true. So when they come face to face with him, it's only natural that they should panic. And by extension, we've become very accustomed to his presence, so it doesn't bother us at all. Ryuko-san nodded in agreement with her own statement. Sorry, I that hissing. I just need to pour myself a drink. Okay, good. New bottle of uh, flavoured sparkling water. There was an interesting moment a couple of days ago when I opened one of these and it sort of exploded over my desk. Thankfully managed to get it out the way of the keyboard and the mouse before it uh, really went nuts, but it was quite impressive. We're so close. We've even touched his skin. His skin? When well, we took the photographs. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. And as usual, Riku-san's statements were technically true, but they still sounded a bit bizarre. Yeah, I remember how you all ran up and poke at me. Really tickled. I, I never touched you. You didn't? Well, only a little. Hey now. But it is because that I have had that experience. But I don't mind being half naked before you now. Oh come on, that swimsuit is not half naked. 
right? <laughs> Let's be honest about this. It's showing a lot of arm and a lot of leg. I've got shorts that uh, show about as much. Seriously, so bouncing somewhere around uh, Facebook, there is an image of me just walking away from one of my housemates, flicking him uh, the two fingers over my shoulder because he was insulting my shorts. Really? Half naked? Although, were it any other man than you, I believe I would feel rather exposed. I see. By the way, are you okay with the pool? What do you mean? Well, I thought it was a fully indoor pool, but... I was worried about the chance of peeping Toms. I could see it from beyond the fence. I never thought about it, but I believe it's alright. Outsiders aren't allowed on the premises anyway. I suppose that's true. Hey guys, when this is done, let's have a swim. That sounds nice. I'm in. Are you sure it's alright to swim without permission? What are you talking about? Who would bother cleaning the pool if they didn't get to swim in it? I thought you were doing it to raise his reputation. Well, that's a bonus. Why do you think I asked you all to change? It's not just to please Miss Aircoon, I can assure you. I thought it was because we would get wet. By getting wet, because we're swimming afterwards. Okay, the pool's empty at the moment, right? Which is how they're cleaning it. It takes a bloody long time to fill a swimming pool. I see. So this was your intent from the beginning. You got it. But, but, but it really does look refreshing, Wanasama. Looks like the biggest bath in the world. Ah, oh, very well. After we finish the cleaning... <coughs> Sorry, voice went a bit quirky for a second. After we finished cleaning, we filled the pool with Sister Mishima supervising. Ah, it really is beautiful when it's clean. And it's all a product of our hard work. That's true. In the end, even you pitched in. <laughs> I am an affiliate of the White Lily Society after all, of course I pitched in. Hey, Sister Mishima, can we take a light swim later? It would usually be forbidden, but I think I'll allow it. Thanks. Huh? What was that? That sound... Is that an alarm? Yes, if you'll excuse me. Sister Mishima quickly left the pool area, looking very concerned. I wonder what's going on. Eh, yeah, must be a malfunction or something. They do happen. Do you people not have fire drills? I'm sorry, one of my ab abiding memories of my first year at uni was the fire alarm going off for a drill at half six in the morning. It's a damn good job I was dressed. <laughs> and I was the only person outside who had the set, you know, who I'd already been dressed because I get up stupidly early, as we mentioned. You know, so I was dressed and pretty much ready to go, and I had the sense to grab a coat on my way out. Everybody else was out there in sort of, you know, pajamas and, uh, and, uh, dressing gowns. I had one, uh, couple who'd clearly been in the same room because they were uh, clearly wearing each other's dressing gowns. <laughs> Which, yeah, I'll, I'll freely admit, you just look at them shivering and you think, <sighs> poor people. Because <laughs> I should mention, this was January, right? This was about the second or third week back after uh, the Christmas holiday, so yeah, it was the middle of January in York, which is, at the best of times, really quite windy. So yeah, I was quite smug about being the only one who was dressed properly. Mm. Ah, I see. Fire alarms sometimes do go off for no reason, don't they? I was strangely afraid of fire, so the sound of an alarm tended to cause me to freeze up. I glanced towards the main school building, but, well, I didn't see smoke at least. Now, now, let's just forget that. Take a swim. Okay, I'll be off then. Oh, Masekun, what's wrong with you? This is all for your benefit anyway. Huh? Because you can't swim in class. If you don't take this opportunity, at least your body will dry out. Well, thanks. I was grateful for the sentiment. Until I looked down at my body. I don't have a swimsuit. Didn't think I'd need one so I wouldn't be able to use it. I'll just go in like that. You can change right afterwards. I suppose that's true. Eh? Huh? I heard a sudden shriek. Ah, ah, ah. What the hell? Ah, <laughs> oh, no. A guy with a camera got in. Huh? Ah! A camera? Hang on. I'll be right back. I'm going to catch him. Wait a minute. She grabbed my hand. When I turned around, I could see that her face was serious. 
The man's trespassing on private property. He's probably dangerous. You should leave this to the Jardin. They'll nab him right away. But my sister is correct. Konomi-chan. Konomi! I will apprehend him! I shall not permit him to take pictures of Wanasama! And Konomi-chan rushed towards the fence and started climbing it lively. Oh, I'm going to. I'm not letting her go alone. R right. Ayaka-san released me stunned. Konomi-chan! I pursued her quickly, and the man with the camera had already turned and was starting to bolt. Masai-san, go that way! We'll fence him in! Got it! There was no arguing with her now. All I could do was hope that I caught him first. Get back here! <clears throat> Get back here! Given that he'd started from the pool, I knew he'd have to pass this way. That alarm must be from before must have been the real thing. Got him! The man ran out alone, and Konomi-chan had lost sight of him. And he seemed so afraid of being chased that he didn't even look my way. And I closed the distance in a second, and flew in front of him to block his path. Ugh! Hold still! <clears throat> I'm handing you over to the police. You're right! I ain't even took a single picture! And it's entering private property is a crime. Give it up. I heard a sound like metal on metal, and suddenly around me the world went white. The hell? <laughs> what the hell kind of knife is that? It's... Mm, it's kind of short, in all honesty. And if you were going to use something like that in a fight, I'd go for a reverse grip. Because you can do all sorts of interesting locks with a reverse grip. Anyway. Uh, out of my way! If, if you don't, I'll, I'll cut you! What's with you? Don't look at me like that. G get out of my way, I told you. Y you didn't hear me? Out of my way. G get out of my way. Stay away from me. Stay away. Stay away. You, you little punk. Stay away. Monsieur Sama. God. Ah. Well, that is terrifying. At least he's got eyes, but it's still terrifying. C cut it out! I'm sorry! C oh, stop! I. Monsieur Sama, stop it! For the record, if the other guy pulls a knife on you, I happen to think you're justified in using all reasonable force to put him down. You know, granted, we get to the issue of once he's on the ground, when do you stop punching him? To which the honest answer is is he conscious? you might want to think about punching him again. You know, if it gets to the point where you've killed him, then you've overdone it. Actually, has anybody ever played um, the game Gunpoint? It's a quite cute little uh, game. But one of the things that you can do is you can uh, jump on guards and then punch them to knock them out. Or you can punch them repeatedly to eventually kill them. And then there's little text boxes that pop up at the bottom if you keep punching them that just eventually says things like, there's no achievement for doing this, you know. Seriously, God, stop it! <laughs> and if you eventually keep going, you get an achievement called This is not a real achievement. Which is, you know, just says, Look, okay, fine, you can have an achievement, but for the love of God, stop! <laughs> which I, I will freely admit that I found that quite amusing. Ah. She threw herself on me, and I pulled me... Oh. She threw herself on me and pulled me off him, and I finally came back to myself. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh man's nose and lips were bloody and he was scrambling backwards on the ground. That's right, I must have straddled him and started punching him in the face. I couldn't believe what I'd done. Yeah, it was a little overkill. And just then I heard footsteps running my way. We found him at... Huh? And with trembling legs, they slowly approached the fallen man. Did you do this, Okanogi Masaya? What's wrong? Why don't you answer me? Who hit who? I... Yes. Yes what? Did he hit you? Did you hit him? Jardin indicated the man. I... I hit him. I'm, uh, I'm actually fine myself. I see. Come on, stand up. We'll treat your wounds before handing you over to the police. Right. He wiped at his mouth and stood up. As he did, he pointed to me, where I sat on the ground and spoke in a loud voice. Th this guy's crazy! 
If this girl hadn't stopped him, he would have killed me. Did I do something worth killing me for, huh? You pulled a knife. At that point, I, as I say, at that point, everything he did was justified. Be quiet. He's nuts. That guy's nuts. Shut up and come with me. He seemed to have more to say, but the Jardin dragged him off. I looked down at my fist. It was spattered with blood and the skin was broken in places. Crazy, huh? Uh, Monsieur Sama, don't let the words of a criminal bother you. Ah, uh, right. N now let's go back. We haven't even touched the water yet. Kenomi Chan helped me to my feet, but I shook my head. No, I'm. I'm not really in the mood anymore. Ah. Uh, sorry, I'll. I'll be heading back first. Let, let the others know, okay? Well, okay. Phew. I took a shower and then laid down on my bed, and the skin on my knuckles still hurt. Even the bone was throbbing. God, I must have been hitting him pretty hard. And the man's words towards me after the Jardin arrived were still ringing in my ears. What the hell did I just do? There was no reason I should have gone that far just to catch the guy. Something had snapped inside me the moment I saw that knife. The sound of the blade unsheathing, the way it reflected the light in my eyes. In that moment... A strange image came to mind. And that's when I lost control. That's when I went mad. But it's obviously something to do with that scar on his back. Oh, shit. What the hell was that image in my mind? I ride around in my bed, but I just... I couldn't remember it all. Was it something I'd really seen? There was... There was a strong emotion associated with it. An overwhelming fear. A, a smothering unease. A raging anger. And then... And then... The desire. The desire to... To protect someone? Oh, it's no use. I, I, I can't remember. I turn my mind over and over again. But in the end, I just... I couldn't remember. Well, this is obviously something to do with the time when he uh, met Rise, isn't it? So, w let's see what happened that day. We know something violent and unpleasant happened. That's presumably where he acquired the scar. So what? Somebody attacked her, he intervened, he got wounded, spent... You know, several months recuperating and for some reason doesn't remember it. What do we think? Concussion? You because know, I think uh, concussions can cause memory loss, can't they? Short term. I would have to uh, look that up to find out, but I think that's you know, true. Pool opening day. <sighs> Tammy San's reporting skills were as preternatural as ever, and she'd seen the entirety of yesterday's business from the shadows. She'd also taken a lot of pictures, and by the next morning, they were making the rounds in the newspaper. Man, was I impressed. <laughs> you really are great in a fight. This is called the mount position, isn't it? You've really got training, right? No. Wow! You must be a prodigy. You were wonderful, Messiah Sam. Right. What happened to the man? I heard he was turned over to the authorities. I see. Well, that sounds about right. He was a serious criminal, after all. But I was really worried. When I knocked on your door, you just said, Come back tomorrow. You sounded upset. I was afraid you were hurt. And Konomi said you weren't, which, which was a relief, but still. Sorry. Well, that's alright, as long as you weren't hurt. After the incident, I'd shut myself off in my room. And after first period, the others had all got together to see me. I really was grateful for their kindness. Oh, well, I should excuse myself. If I wait until the bell rings, I won't make it in time. Right. Salutations. Salutations. Konomi Chan bowed to the other girls as she left the classroom. She really was on the ball as far as manners went. <laughs> but this will increase Masaya San's reputation even more, though the incident itself is regrettable. No, I'm not so sure about that. Huh? We all focused our attention on Tamisan. Look, I'll tell you more at lunch. Oh, all right. Well, salutations. Salutations. I'll be off too. Later. Right. Bye. Salutations. <laughs>
That was a fairly impressive hiccup. I seem to be getting a lot of vocal ticks today. Ah, okay. Salutations. The girls all left, and Rice Ann tilted her head. And then she murmured in a soft voice. What do you think Tammy San could mean? It seems obvious that it would increase your reputation. Yeah. At noon, we all gathered in the dining hall. I didn't have time to do proper research, so this could just be my personal impression. Tammy Sell held the newspaper in front of her as she spoke. But I think they're all a bit afraid. Afraid? Because you beat the crap out of that guy. The crap? Look, it means he beat him up a lot. Either that or I beat him to the point where he actually managed to defecate himself. Theoretically possible. <laughs> Tammy-san tapped the photo with a finger as she spoke. As usual, her work was pro-caliber. The way he brandished his fist was scary. So was his expression. Now that you mention it, that's true. I felt a new pang of shock at the sight of my expression. Slapping and scratching happens at Venice's, but nothing to this degree. I think it was a real shock to everyone. You may be right. But he was dealing with a serious criminal. Well, that's true. No, he was dealing with a peeping Tom with a knife. But, okay, um, the guy was a extremely minor league criminal in the grand, you know, in the grand criminal scheme of things. Don't get me wrong. You know, photographing women without their permission is definitely wrong. But compared to a lot of other crimes, it's not exactly high on the priority list. Once the guy pulled the knife, then we get into more tricky issues of... Well... Actually, I don't know how you'd even classify that one. Assault with a deadly weapon? Given that... You know, he was... Running away, got intercepted and pulled a weapon... I don't know who technically counts as at fault there. I'm assuming it's the guy who escalates the fight. I.e. the one who pulled the knife. not sure. I'd have to do some research, and well, frankly, I'm far too lazy to do that. But it is unusual to see you like this, Messiah. In fact, I think it's the first time I have. Chio looked at me with concern. Did something happen? Did he do something to you? Um, there was a funny feeling in my throat. I was finding it hard to speak. I wasn't fully sure of why. I was finding that I didn't want to talk about it. I swallowed the gummy saliva in my mouth, but Tammy San spoke before I could. The other guy pulled out a knife, and that's why Messiah San got desperate. A knife? Besides, that guy took perfect pictures of us. Of course he was determined to stop him. Well, I guess there's that too. It really is a shame though. We've come so close to a majority. Now it sounds like we may lose su some support for next time. As Rice San spoke, she produced the results of the previous week's survey and laid them on the table. Wow! We're over 200! Amazing! After all, he was a shining hero on that day. Ah, it really was a stirring moment. At first he seemed like a real unknown quantity. That's what I thought anyway. So I'm sure the other girls felt it even more. And now we have so many people supporting him. I'm as happy for him as I'd be if it, they were me... I'm as happy for him as I'd be if it were me they were supporting. I feel the same way. Yes. Yeah. The others all chimed their agreement, and I felt a mixture of happiness and well, self-consciousness. My goal, our goal rather, was to get a majority, but even without that, it was nice to have friends. If nothing else, that alone made me happy that I came to Venice's. It's a bit too early for such sentiment, sister. Maybe, but doesn't it seem like it's already decided? Yes, but... There is a saying about counting your chickens before they are hatched. It refers to celebrating victory before the victory is achieved. Huh? Are you saying you don't want Masekun to leave school, Ritsuko? Uh... I'm pretty sure I heard you tell Mother I dislike changing my decisions once I've made them. Or something like that. So now I really have no idea what you think of Masekun. I'd thought the same thing in the past. Though, admittedly, I'd had very few interactions with... with, with with Ritsuko-chan. It seemed like she probably didn't dislike me at least, but I wasn't sure. Well, how about it? Are you finally starting to accept Masekun? I would not say that precisely. I merely feel grateful to him. Eh? 
What for? Because you saved my sister before. Ah. Ah, jeez, don't bring that up in front of everyone. It's embarrassing. For once, Ayakasama's embarrassment seemed genuine. At that time, I was truly glad to have you here, Miss Ayasama. I am grateful to you. That much is genuine. Right. And so, I'm not sure how to say it exactly. Then I'll say it for you. You're thinking you might want to give him a year here to repay the favour, right? Perhaps. Ritsuko-chan smiled in an extremely natural way. It really was a rare sight. Those smiles might have taken away from her reputation as Bella Pine, but they also made her a lot cuter. I have stayed in my position many times before. I wish for a climactic triumph for one Asama. Therefore I would feel disappointed if you were to stumble on the premier judgement. Right. Even if it wasn't quite in the way I wanted, I did have the backing of the two members of the Red Rose Society. I was starting to feel confident that I could make it through my first trial. Somehow or other. He received another boost in support. He almost has his majority. Could this be the proof of Masekun's righteousness? What do you think, Mitsuki? I don't know. And over such a short time, Marika had grown very haggard. Mitsuki was worried. She could guess what the reason was. At first, she thought perhaps she was in love with him, but that was starting to seem like it wasn't the case. But Marika was torn. Viewed impartially, Masea did appear to be worthy of the descriptor righteous. And Marika must have had the same impression. And yet, Maria was trying to have him driven out. Mitsuki just couldn't figure out why. They appeared to be a divergence between Marika's feelings and her actions, and she was caught between them. Anyway, we just have to get Masea-san out of here. Once we do that, then Wanisama won't have to feel this way anymore. Actually, I suspect she'll feel worse. Because I think she's got a decent heart. She's just been pushed into this by somebody who's incredibly stupid and backwards. Who's her grandmother, who... Going to be interesting to find out who that is. Because I can guarantee she'll turn up at some point. If we haven't already met her. But, uh... <sighs> what was I saying? Oh, yes. But, you know, let's face it, if she uses sneaky, underhand tactics to get rid of Masea, she's going to feel pretty damn bad about it. If we could just find some obvious flaw in Masea-kun's exterior... We still have 12 days, Wanasama. Ah, uh, as you recall, you did tell me not to set traps for him, Wanasama. Yes. I had an idea, and this recent incident may give us our chance. Recent incident? It's in today's newspaper. You, you haven't read it, Wanasama. Yes, I, I read it. What did you think when you read it? Let me see. Part of it was impressive, but, but part concerned me. What he did was commendable, but, but the violence of it... I feel the same way. A lot of people probably feel the same way too. Huh? Wanasama, this might be our last chance. I told you before that we still have 12 days, but... The truth is, even I know that that is not a lot of time. So this time, we have to set a trap for him. What kind of trap? Th that is... I think it will work if we act now. Right now, everyone is linking Masea San's name to the word violence. So there's a good possibility that that's how people will interpret it. Of course, the people closest to him won't be deceived, but, but that won't be a problem for us. What's important is the numbers. All we need is a majority for the Premier Judgment. That... that is true. What do you think, Wanasama? Is it going too far after all? N no. But I reject the suggestion that you should be the one to execute the plan. Huh? I will carry it out. Personally. But... Wanasama... But even if it is a mere fabrication, you will likely be injured. Am I wrong? In addition, if you fail in your attempt, it will reflect poorly on your reputation. It may even spread in indelicate rumours about you. I do not believe that you could withstand such treatment. But, but then what of you, Wanasama? The things you said would apply to... Of course. But I was the one who set us on this course. And I am the one who should accept the responsibility. 
Listen, Mitsuki. Marika took her hand and squeezed it with unexpected tightness. Mitsuki returned the squeeze. You... You alone will stand as authority, won't you? To my righteousness. Yes. Well, she's about to do something deeply unethical that she feels quite bad about. <sighs> Admittedly, it doesn't matter how bad you feel about it if you still do it. If you know it's the wrong thing, don't do it. Chapter 12, Fallen Idol. And I think that's a pretty darn good point to end this part, particularly as we've overrun ever so slightly. So, I will say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next part.